we are working on the enterprise structure. Okay. Today, we'll finish uh, the remaining steps. And coming to yesterday, we are uh, in the process of uh, creating the ledger components. The ledger components in the sense, uh, the currency. So to create a ledger, we need currency. We have taken the predefined currency and a calendar, we have created the calendar and chart of account, we have created the structure with the three segments. We took three segments for our practice. Okay. And uh, SLA, coming to SLA, it's a pure financial topic. I don't want to discuss SLA because uh, uh, already for the chart of account uh, creation, uh, it has become too much on the financial side. So SLA, what I'm planning to do is SLA, I'll take the uh, predefined one, SLA also. Okay. I will take the predefined one. Currency will take INR, which is a predefined one. And uh, calendar we have created, we'll take that. What's the calendar name? I think I created 53K accounting calendar. This is the calendar name coming to the chart of account. Nothing but structure instance. What is a structure instance? 53K global structure instance we created. So this will take and coming to SLA, SLA also will take the predefined one. The predefined one is standard accrual. Standard accrual. So this is predefined we are taking. And this one also predefined we are taking. So we are ready with these four uh, elements. Now we are ready to create the ledger also. Okay. I will create a ledger now. I'm using the dev 23 instance. Uh, which role is required to perform all these uh, configurations, the enterprise structure configurations? What is the role required? Application, application, implement application implementation consultant role is enough because we are doing all these configurations from the setup. setup and maintenance. From the setup and maintenance. So application implementation consultant role is fine. I would like to see attendance on Saturdays and Mondays also. On Saturdays, I'm finding less attendance. Today, you see the attendance. What's attendance today? 30. I'm not taking Sunday session, right? Just Saturday session. Saturday also you have to connect to the classes regularly. So from the financials, from the financials, by using this task list, we have created a calendar and then chart of account. And here we can see the predefined currencies also. Okay. And now the next step is ledger creation. To create a ledger, I'm navigating to the general ledger task and I'm clicking on the primary ledger. And I'm creating a new ledger. Click on the plus button. Click on the plus button and ledger name. Ledger name.
and ledger. Okay. And chart of account, nothing but structure instance. Structure instance. Okay. P3K, global structure instance. So here, this drop down, it will display, I think, maximum uh, 50 values only. This drop down. Okay. Because in the real time, we won't create more than that. Since uh, the practice environment, every student is creating a chart of accounts. That's why we may see many chart of accounts uh, in our demo instance. But in real instance, we see less than 50 only. That's why Oracle has given provision for only 50. Only 50 get displayed here. And accounting calendar, 53K accounting calendar. Currency, this is yes. in the... IND, currency IND. Coming to accounting method is nothing but SLA. SLA, we decided to take the predefined one. So predefined one is standard accrual. Take the first one, standard accrual. So chart of account, nothing but structure instance and calendar, currency and accounting method. So when you have all these four ready, then you are able to create the ledger. Okay. And click on save and close. And after that, we have to set up the ledger options. We have to set up the ledger options. For setting up the ledger options, if I click on this task, this task is already selected for render ledger. It's already selected for render ledger. So if you click on this, it will open for this ledger. But we wanted to set up ledger options for our ledger, right? So first you have to change this. Click on the scope and select our uh, ledger. Select our ledger. I'm selecting the ledger. So here in the ledger screen, all these settings are for the finance guy, you see on the bottom. So we will just finish uh, the important and basic setups here. Only two important fields are there. That is a uh, journal language. So journal language, uh, I'm selecting American English. Sir, what is meant by journal? Journal is nothing but uh, every transaction is posted to the ledger, right? Every transaction, every financial transaction posted to the ledger. It posted to the ledger in the journal format it posted to the ledger in the journal format so i'm selecting language as english okay and retained earnings account retained earnings account uh, you have to use uh, a liability account here for the retained earnings account I'm selecting the company segment value, anything select here for our uh, practice purpose, no problem. Company and department, anything you select here, but coming to account, but coming to account, you have to select the liability account here. Liability account, select the liability account and you click on okay. What is the return earnings account? This return earnings account is nothing but the client is using some old ERP when the client is moving to the fusion ERP. So whatever the value that is available in the old system, whatever the ledger value that is available in the old system that we bring to the fusion system. So that value is called as a return uh, earnings account. That value is called as a return earnings account. Nothing but from the old ERP to the Fusion ERP, whatever the ledger value that we move, it's called as a return earnings account. I just enter return earnings account and the journal language, that's it. And remaining whatever you see here, the currency that we selected, chart of account, and then accounting calendar and SLA. And in the bottom, all these are options are for the finance guy. That's it. Ledger options also completed. In the ledger options, only two things we did. Only two things we did in the ledger options.
Okay. The next thing is uh, now we created a ledger, right? The ledger is belongs to which company? I am coming to the connections part. I created ledger. The ledger is belongs to which company? It belongs to the tech lead society company. The legal entity we created, right? So we need to link that legal company with this ledger. So to link that, switch to all tasks. Switch to all tasks. Click on assign legal company. To your ledger, assign a legal company. Click on assign legal company. So click on the plus button and enter the legal entity here. Now the ledger that we created, it belongs to which company? This company. So any financial transaction uh, posted to this ledger that belongs to which company? This company. Okay. We connected the legal entity with the ledger. Okay. I'm saving this. Now coming to the steps. Coming to the steps, just now we completed these steps, step number 15, 16, and then 17. We completed the three steps. That means totally, so far we completed 17 steps. Out of these 17 steps, I missed actually one step here. That is sixth step. Okay. I am doing the sixth step. Now the sixth step is nothing but after creating the legal entity, we have to associate LDZ to the legal entity. We have to associate LD, LDZ to the legal entity. LDZ is a HR concept. This is for the payroll. For our legal company, we enabled payroll checkbox, right? Do you remember for our legal company, we yes, enabled yes. payroll checkbox? Yes. Yeah. In is legal entities. This checkbox. So since we enabled payroll for our company, we need to perform LDG setup. That LDG setup is a HR setup. It's, it's which belongs to the payroll. Payroll in the sense, uh, when you're paying salary to the employee, you have a certain breakup, right? What is the basic salary? What is the HRA? What is the special allowance? What is the PF amount? So that breakup that is configured as part of the LDZ. Okay. So here, since we enabled LD uh, payroll for our uh, company, we have to do LDG setup. To perform LDG setup, what is a navigation? I don't remember the navigation. That's why I navigate to this task directly. How to navigate to this task directly? Go to global search. Go to global search. And search for that task here, which I have given in the document. The task name I have given in the document. Search for that task search for the task and for your company, search your company here. Search your company here, open the company. And then click on edit and update. Click on edit and update and click on OK. Under payroll, under payroll, select the LDZ. Did we create an LDZ? No, we didn't create it. We didn't create it. So we will take the existing LDZ, not a problem. So our is India, right? We will take uh, the India LDZ, India Legislative Data Group. I'm taking, uh, the, I'm taking the predefined LG, LDZ. Am I creating LDZ? No. I'm taking the existing one that I'm assigning to the 
legal company. This is step number six. Okay. So by this step, totally we completed so far 17 steps. Now I am pausing the recording. Now I am pausing. I will pause the recording now and I will show you all these configurations in the real time application. I will show you how the real time application look like. Okay. So since it is my client application, it is not ethical to record. That's why I'm not recording the session. Everyone, please concentrate. Okay. Oh, I'm pausing the recording. Okay, everyone, please concentrate. Okay, so whatever we are learning and I'm teaching, it's pure real time. Okay, only difference is here I'm assuming and I'm creating everything, but in real time, no assumptions. You talk to the client. So how you'll come to know whether client is having how many line of businesses and it is having operations in how many countries, you have to talk to the client. When you talk to the client, you'll understand. And accordingly, you also collect the data and you enter that data in the application. Okay, but there is a process of documentation. You have to document it. Okay, and then configure the application. And then prepare a configuration document also. Right now, all people are, all of you are preparing the configuration document. You are preparing the configuration document, all of you. This is the configuration document only. What you did, the setups in the application is a configuration document. This is called as MC50. MC50, model configuration, 50. The document number is 50. And this is also called as, and also here, you're also uh, adding the screenshots for the user creation, right? That's called as a training uh, manual, user manual. Suppose client wants to take care of a uh, user creation, user creation, then you can send this uh, document to the client as a manual, as a training manual, how to create a user, how to add the roles, how to do simple changes in the roles, custom roles, how to create, how to run the programs, how to schedule the programs. This is also user manual. Right now you are preparing the configuration document and user manual also. You are preparing the project documents currently. Later, what are the remaining documents are there? I will tell you. Okay. Clear team. Yes. Yes. So we completed <laughs> till yes, uh, step number seventeen. Step number seventeen we completed. Now we'll do the step number eighteen. The step number eighteen is nothing but you just verify whatever the ledger setup that you did. Just verify and submit the program. Step number 18. And also I would like to tell you one more point. What is the course fee? What is our course fee team? 25K. 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 25K is our course fee. So if you buy this course from Oracle University, how much it would be? From Oracle University, how much it would be? Total it I saw a four lakh. Like Ninety thousand something like that. So four lakh something ninety thousand. That is only the base cost. It will add eighteen percent GST also. I don't know why education is under eighteen percent GST. I don't know why it's not a luxury. I don't know why it is uh, in our India. Okay. You know, if your eighteen percent GST got added, it almost uh, more than five lakhs. Five lakh fifty. So if you pay 5 lakh 50 and if you buy course from Oracle, they will give you only one instance. 
they will give you only one instance. If it is slow, you can't do anything. Because if it is slow, what you'll do, you just create a ticket and Oracle will reply you after two days. Now this instance is slow, you people are calling me. If it is Oracle, you're gonna call whom? They're also giving the same instances only. If it is slow, we are giving alternate instances also. We gave you two instances, not two. In the future, we will give you three instances. Three in the future. After two weeks, we will give you one more instance. So total, it will become three instances. And also, if you buy course from Oracle University, they won't show you the configurations end to end like me. They has the PPTs. They will walk through the PPTs. They will just walk through the PPTs. They will show. They won't show you the end to end setups and configurations like how I'm creating and showing you. They will show mostly in the PPT. Eighty percent in the PPT. Twenty percent in the application. Now I'm not using a PPT at all. Because why I'm not using PPT? Because in one hour, it is not possible to explain PPT. It is not possible to explain in the application. It is not possible. Both. That's why I'm directly explaining in the application. Practical teaching this is. Okay. So let's complete the last step of the ledger. Step number 18. And also sometimes if these are slow, they're not in our control because it's a Oracle control. If it is not our own servers, even though if we approach Oracle, we have to create a ticket and we have to wait for them till the time they respond. We don't have a customer care number to contact directly. <laughs> there is no such option. That is a problem with the corporates. Huh? Big companies, you can't do anything. You cannot even enter into their premises also. You see my website, right? This website. I'm using GoDaddy for my website hosting. They migrated their server. During the migration, they missed some files. They missed some files during the migration. I fighted almost for one week with the India customer care and then US customer care, no use. One week, unnecessary time waste for me. I can't do anything because these are big corporates. Huh? Now I go to, again, financials. What is the strength to the team? 30 members. Huh? I disappointed. This is second week only. Second week Saturday. I'm not taking Sunday sessions. Do you want me to plan Sunday sessions also? <laughs> no. Oh. Then why you are taking a relaxation on Saturday? What you did in these five days? You have become a PM of India. In the five days from Monday to Friday, you are relaxing on Saturday. Since you have become a Prime Minister of India, what is this? Click on General Ledger. Now submit this program, review and submit accounting configurations. Click on this. Uh, Krishna, have you resumed the recording? Yeah, yeah, I did. Thanks for checking with me. So here, well, before you submit this program, just verify what is the legal company that is added to the ledger. Okay. And to your ledger, what is the currency, chart of account and calendar and then SLA. Just cross verify it and then hit the submit button. That's it.
and there is a program which will run. You can also track that program by going to the scheduled process. The program you can track. I don't know, Firefox is low compared to Chrome. That's why I'm using the Chrome. For the Oracle certifications, also you have to pay eighteen percent uh, GST. Yes, sir. <laughs> always, uh, you know, tell this. If you if you earn hundred rupees, out of that hundred rupees, thirty rupees tax you will pay. If you're on the 30% slab, and then remaining is 70 rupees. Suppose if you go outside and if you buy anything, you have to pay GST. That means 18, 18 rupees is gone. So remaining is 52 rupees. How much you are earning and how much in your pocket? Finally, 52 rupees. Okay, that means. Uh, Half of the amount almost gone for the taxes. And if something is wrong and you don't have a, a proper answer also, if the ro your road is not good, your road is not good, what do you do? You can't do anything. So our 50 rupees with the politicians, huh? maybe they are spending 20 rupees and 30 rupees in their pockets. Maybe. What about Dev64? It's good. Anyone using Dev64? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. using it. It's very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah very good. Dev3 and Dev23. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was able to complete the entire task in half an hour. The entire task. Oh. It was very good speed. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So once that program is successfully completed, and if you open your ledger, financials, and I'm going to the ledger, if I open my ledger, it will display in the completed status. You see this tick mark means it's completed. Green color mark means completed, okay. If you see a status uh, 
like this, it's in process. Okay. So all the green color ones are completed ones. Okay. Now, okay, we are done with the finance part and HR part. Now let's come to our part, supply chain part. Now come to our part, supply chain part. From step number 19 to till step number 34, it's supply chain. So first we will create a business unit. We will create a business unit. Suppose your client is operating in three countries, three countries and one line of business. That means into pharma, let us take into pharma in three countries. How many BUs has to be created? Three. Three. Three BUs we have to create. So generally the business unit is created for country, country specific we create. Okay. I'm going to create a business unit now. We can switch to the procurement. Okay, I'll switch to the procurement team. From the financials, I'm switching to the procurement. I'm coming to our part. She should be good, sir. Okay, from the procurement, the starting task lists are same. You see enterprise profile, legal structure, financial reporting structure. You can configure from by selecting financials or procurement, anything else. You can configure from any module, not a problem. Okay, the starting configurations, whatever we did, you can configure from any module. Okay, now I am selecting the ordination structure this task list. From this task list, I'm going to create the business unit. From the organizational structure, click on manage business unit. And I'm trying to create a new BU. All these are the BUs already created. I'm trying to create a new BU. Tomorrow is a Sunday. If you're having any pending things to be practiced, please complete by today, tomorrow, today and tomorrow. Enterprise structure is very, very important. So if you practice enterprise structure, you are able to follow the course. Fifty three K INDBU. Okay. You can create a BU like this also, like Pharma BU. Okay. Suppose if your BU is a retail, retail industry, then select retail INDBU. You can create like this also. Enter the name and you know location if this BU exists in some location create that location you know how to create a location right create a location okay. and attach that location here but which is optional not required if you don't attach the location here no problem okay and coming to the reference data set coming to the reference data set we created our own reference data set right select that here this is the reference data set which I created. So for India, I have created exclusively a separate reference data set that I'm selecting now. Okay. Save and close. Location I'm not entering, but which is which is not required, uh, optional configuration. This is just for our informational purpose only. 
and the manager also. If you want to enter some manager here, who is the manager for this BU, you can enter, but this is also for our information purpose only. Okay, I'm not entering that. Click on save and close. Now, after that, we have to configure the functions of this BU functions. From this BU, you are allowed to create uh, invoices, payments, purchase orders. That's called functions. So we'll configure that functions. This is the next task, assign business functions. Click on the task and it is asking you want to assign the functions for which BU. Select that BU. For which, which, which BU you want to configure the functions. Click on save and close. How many are how many of you are from Hyderabad? Currently in Hyderabad. How many of you? I am from Hyderabad. One. Me. Two. Yeah, me. Three. Me also. I'm also four, from Hyderabad. Five. Krishna. Six. Six members, that's it. Yes, I am from Hyderabad only, but I'm staying in Bangalore currently. Okay. Remaining are from different states, huh? Different I am from Hyderabad, uh, but I live in California now. Okay. Now, the functions, the functions for this BU. So from this BU, if this function enabled, you are able to create a purchase orders. Let me scroll down, yeah, procurement. If this function is there, you are allowed to create purchase orders. Okay. And uh, if this function is there, you are able to request request nothing but requisition. Hey, I want so-and-so product. So if you want so-and-so product, then you have to create a requisition. You have to create a requisition in the application. You have to enter which product you want, what is the quantity, to which location you want, by which date you want. You have to create a requisition document. And after that, that product can be purchased from the procurement. After that, we receive it. We receive the product from the supplier receiving. And after that, we generate an invoice. We create an invoice in the application. And we make the payment to the supplier. We make the payment to the supplier. That means I enabled, this is called as a procure to pay. This cycle is called as a procure to pay. So I enabled procure to pay related business functions. You can request, your requested can be purchased by the procurement department and the stock can be received by warehouse department and invoicing and payment done by the finance department. Okay. And also we maintain the stock within our inventory, right? So you also select the material management. Select the material management. So out of all these business functions, what are supply chain procurement related business functions? Invoicing and payment is supply chain procurement function? No. 
what is our functions requisition receiving procurement material management because inventory is our module so these are our functions remaining are related to other modules so if you see here customer payment and then uh, customer contract management billing and revenue management this is financial module year module account receivable module okay so here if you see sales don't confuse this not order management it is crm it is crm module don't confuse this is order management okay so for this business function we can enable only the required sorry for this business unit we can enable the required business functions you have to check with the client so in case of global procurement in case of I mean, sorry centralized procurement suppose if your us is a centralized procurement service provider then for india do you enable this procurement function no suppose us is your centralized procurement service provider then for india you enable this function no, no. No. only for us us you should enable this function okay that's it only these uh, you know these check boxes are okay i am enabling only those check boxes and this is india bu right so this india bu is linked to which company and which ledger so this is the connection thing okay this is the connection i'm linking the ledger with the business unit if i select the ledger automatically the legal company got defaulted why it got defaulted because we already linked these two we already linked these two these two we are linking with the business unit so if you create any purchase order under this bu under this bu the purchases is belongs to which company this company the purchaser should hit which ledger this ledger okay if you create a sales order and uh, if you ship the stock to the customer out of that sale you get some revenue right let us say you got 10 dollar revenue that 10 dollar revenue is re belongs to which company this company that 10 dollar revenue goes to which ledger this ledger you can see that sales order revenue under which ledger this ledger okay and currently i am enabling this checkbox this checkbox significance i will explain you in the order management i will explain you in the order management but currently i am enabling this checkbox this is called as a profit center business unit this checkbox has to be enabled for the dropship cycle okay and i'm i'm saving the screen and i'm also closing so this is the functions of the bu so we define these functions for one BU. If the client is having multiple BUs, you have to repeat this configuration for that many times. If the client is having 10 BUs, 10 times you have to repeat this configuration in real time. You can ignore this warning and proceed to continue. Now, after the business functions, next two settings are just we will verify and uh, we will uh, close them. This is important. This is on the reference data set only. Step number 21 you switch to all tasks, switch to all tasks and uh, click on. Main is business unit set assignment. This configuration. What is the reference data set that we assign to our BU? Which reference data set we assigned? 
So I have attached what? 53K IMB uh, RDS. RDS. That yes. means if I create a payment term, if I create a payment term called 10 net, nothing but 10 days time, if I assign this payment term to this reference data set, I'm creating a payment term that I'm assigning to this reference data set. And this reference data set is linked to our BU. Yes. Correct? That means our BU can access which payment term? The standard payment term. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, another example jobs of the employee. Jobs. The jobs are nothing but, you know, the jobs you know already, like a manager and a senior manager, director. Vice presidents, vice president, okay, and CEO, CFO, CTO. So these jobs are actually common, right? These jobs are common, correct? If it is any country, normally you see these jobs, okay? Now, all these jobs, what I do is, since I'm thinking it's common, I will assign to common reference data set. All these jobs I assign to common. Now, these jobs can be accessed by my BU. No. No, right? No. Because it's it's uh, added to which reference data set? IMD RDS. RDS. But these jobs are belongs to which one? Common. 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 Now in the screen. Now in the screen, this is to search the screen fields, the filter icon. I'm using the filter icon here. I'm using the filter icon here. If you click on this icon, you can search based on the columns. Okay. And I'm searching for the jobs here. I am searching for the jobs here. So what is our default reference data set? IND RDS, right? So that I am changing to common here. Only against the jobs. Only again is the jobs. What I'm doing, I'm changing it to common. Now my view can access the jobs which I created under common, right? Yes, Krishna. Clear? So yeah. for a view, for a view, there is a default reference data set. The default reference data set can be overridden against any particular setup. Now, jobs, I'm thinking jobs are common for every BU, for India or US or UK, the, the jobs are common. That's why what I'm doing, all these jobs I have assigned to common. You know, this common, I will be assigning to all the business needs here. Good. So that means object-wise also we can yes, uh, yes. change the yes, yes. Uh, reference data set. Right? Yes. Okay. Object-wise also you can change the reference data set. Okay. And remaining remaining objects are are referencing with our India. are referencing with our India reference data set only the remaining ones. Okay. And this you can change at any time. This you can change at any time. Okay, so jobs and then departments is also there, departments. Departments is also there. So department like, uh, you know, departments are also generally common. If it is any country, if it is any business, normally departments also common. You will see sales department, marketing department, and then finance, HR. finance, HR, okay. So what I do, I create all these departments under common. Okay. So again, it's the department object. I will select common here. 
instead of our default reference data set, I will overwrite that with the common. That's it. So, sir, how many objects are controlled like this on the reference data set? Not every setup. Not every setup, only few setups. Only few setups are controlled, controlled uh, based on the reference data set. That setup list you can see here. You can see here the setup list. Only few, whatever you see from the top to bottom, only few are controlled at the reference data set level. Suppose an example, positions. There is a setup called a position, employee position. It is not RDS controlled. It is not RDS controlled. No, it's not RDS controlled. You have to create these positions specific to the BU only. Nothing but an example, INDBU, India BU, US BU. Position is nothing but procurement manager. The difference between job and position is job is generic and the position is specific procurement manager, not just manager. What manager is procurement manager, HR manager. These are called as positions. So coming to positions, it is not reference data set controlled. So you have to create positions under the BU only. If same positions it exists in US also, you have to repeat here. Here duplication is there, data redundancy is there. It's not reference data set controlled. I created under India and again, same job, same positions I created under US also. What I'm trying to convey is not every setup, not every object is reference data set controlled. Only few are controlled at the reference data set level. The jobs are controlled at reference data set level. That's why we are creating only once. So these jobs we are pointing to every BU. Right here, if you have one more BU called USBU, what you do, you simply assign common to USBU. Are you creating again? Are you creating again here, coming to the jobs? No. Under no. USBU? No, you are not creating. Again, is the job you are selecting common reference data set. But coming to positions, since, since it is not reference data set controlled, you are creating again the same positions for every BU. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, so yes. on the supply chain side, what is controlled? On the supply chain side, what is controlled? Only few are controlled on the supply chain side. So all these setups is mix, mixer of financials, HR, CRM, supply chain, manufacturing. It's mixture of all. On the procurement and supply chain side, I would say old reasons, cancellation reasons, and uh, anything else, yeah, customer account sites, customer account relationship, and then departments, uh, to be frank, it's HR actually, departments, because the departments are related to employee. Anything related to employee, it's a HR. Job, positions, department, employee, grades, all those are HR actually. Grade, you see here, and then jobs is also HR. This landed cost setup is belongs to costing module. It is also supply chain. I think whole codes also belongs yes, to the, the supply chain. chain. Locations, pricing rules. Okay. Maybe today you are not able to understand everything at a time. Okay. But down the line, you'll automatically understand what is available from the reference data set. You see all this list is each module, receivable module, nothing but financial module, all this list. That's it. This is the list step. that's it. So what is controlled from the supply chain and procurement? I have explained you high, high level quickly, but don't worry. Automatically you'll understand in the coming classes. Okay. Now on the reference data side, I think you're, you're getting more, more and more clarity, right? So in the down the line in the coming classes also, once we practically use this reference data set, you'll get extra clarity also, okay? The last setup for today, 
so that I can be finish the business in a topic. I can finish the business in a topic. The last setup for today. So in case of procurement models, so here if you see, this is centralized procurement. In case of centralized procurement, India BU, Singapore BU, China BU, for all these BUs, who is the procurement service provider? USB. Yes. USBU is yes. a procurement service provider. How to configure this? So when defining all these BUs, do you give the procurement function? No. We no. should not. We should no. not give procurement function. We should give procure fun fun function only to US. the USB. Yes. That means to achieve centralized procurement, one configuration is business functions. Correct? What is the next configuration? What is the second configuration? I'll show you that now. Main is service provider relationship. If you go here, main is service provider relationship. If you go here, so for India BU, for India BU, who is a procurement service provider currently? It is India itself. It is India itself. So that means this kind of model is called as centralized or global procurement. What is this? Decentralized. This is decentralized. Because it has the procurement business function. So it can procure from himself. It is decentralized. Suppose if you have not given procurement function to this BU, will it display here? No. Then who is a procurement service provider? You have to attach here. You have to attach the procurement service provider here. I'm selecting US. So in case of centralized procurement, you have to open the screen for all the BUs. It could be India BU. Here, as per this notepad, you have to open that screen for India BU, Singapore BU, China BU. You open the screen for all the BUs and select US as a procurement service provider. Okay, got it? Yes, sir. So this is this. Second step to achieve the centralized procurement. Uh, sir, I have one question. Then in uh, meantime, then we need to then uh, unselect the India BU, right? Actually, it, it won't display here. If since you've given the procurement function, it is displaying. If you don't give procurement function, it won't display here at all. Okay. It won't display here at all. Since it is not enabled for the procurement, it won't display. It is, it's going to be empty. If you come to the screen, it's going to be empty. Then you have to select who is a procurement service provider. Clear? Clear. Yes. Okay. So that's it for today. And uh, I'm not saving the screen. Because I would like to show you what decentralized. That's why I'm not saving. I'm just canceling the screen. Okay. Now I completed till step number 22. We finished with the business net. Coming to business net, these four steps are there. 19 to 22. Okay. That's it for today. Any practice doubts? No class tomorrow. Next class on Monday. Next class on Monday. Okay. And an important announcement. We are uh, sharing this information in the group. And every day we are also putting the WhatsApp status also. So some unknown people are sending messages with our logo in the WhatsApp saying that we are from TechLead Society or we are from so-and-so. We are trying to add you into another group. We are sending you a code. Please give that code to us. If you give a code to them, you'll be, your mobile get hacked. 
online scams are becoming growing nowadays online scams are going growing a lot please be careful when you are on the facebook or whatsapp or instagram or if you are opening any website please be careful don't share your pins or don't click on any unnecessary links okay i think in the group yesterday someone messaged me right in the group yes yes please observe that carefully we if you receive any messages other than our institute number please ignore it you know our institute number right okay i'll quickly review the practice status hindu chart of account you completed almost everything okay madam don't use this uh, ekmk instance madam okay okay you are using dev okay fine yes sir okay use a dev instance and complete your practice okay you are using dev instance and complete your practice okay you are using dev 23 is it yes sir yes use a dev 264 uh, and complete everything once again okay okay sir one more time okay thank you navina I think you're also on track, right? You completed with yes, the sir. chart of account. Yes, sir. I see it. How many times practice completed, madam? Today I did twice, sir. Okay. You I'll also configure everything day. again in 64 also. Okay. Okay, sir. Sure. Sir. Very good, madam. Thank you. Rahim. Yes, sir. Okay. You completed almost everything. How many times practice completed, Rahim? Uh, only two times, sir. Again, I have to do this uh, chart of account uh, again. Uh, okay. Uh, for this chart of account, I have used that uh, uh, SEM user. I didn't create it from my user. So, okay, no problem. You can do it from any user, not an issue. So, please prepare for the theory also. Yes. In the next 10 days, I will. I will uh, take a QA and a question and answer session. Please oh. prepare for the theory also. Oh. Rakesh. Rakesh. User categories running the programs, all books, custom rules. Going to the bottom chart of account. We are using 23. Okay. Very good, man. Thank you. Krishna? Yes. Krishna, you are using you in your name. It's because yeah. of the numerology. No, no, nothing like that. Okay. So in Eastern India, the same pronounce it like that. In Eastern India. Rolls, sandbox, you used Google logo, database connection. You started working on the enterprise. Okay. Red enterprise legal entities. Excellent, thank you. And next, Harish. This is your first email, Harish. No, sir. Oh, good. I think I didn't review. I reviewed only one of your emails. Good, thank you. Also, convert everything. For the enterprise structure, you are maintaining a separate document. Huh? Yes, sir. Only for enterprise. Thanks, sir. Next. Again, it's from Rakesh. How to assign BU in process acquisition? This you will get a. Uh, why you are going? This is almost 
later stages one rakesh i cannot explain this in a one sentence that is that is 52 batch oh so 52 batch yeah. okay so then i'll clarify his question rakesh you are attending both 53 and 52nd no, sir. No, Rakesh both are sir, there. Yeah, Rakesh, Rakesh Rangaraj. Rangaraj. Okay, okay. Me some Rakesh. This is data access uh, issue. Okay. Me some Rakesh. This is data access issue. Assign the data access. And also procurement agent also. Hello. Okay. That's it from my set for today. And I'll see you on Monday. Please send me the practice status, practice for at least minimum two times and also prepare for the three re. Please watch all the recordings again, at least enterprise structure videos. Please prepare for the theory also. Note down the yes. important points in your running notes. Yes. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Griffin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.